There used to be a time when sin was called by its right name. When people were not afraid to say sin was sin. There used to be a time when there were standards and limits. This was acceptable. That was unacceptable. Moral standards and limits were known and respected. Godly standards were known and upheld. There used to be a time when engaging in particular behaviors and activities was frowned upon and people would be ashamed to participate in them. There used to be a time when sexuality was something private between a husband and a wife and to deviate outside of that was unthinkable. Sure, people have engaged in sinful behavior all throughout history, but it was never something to be celebrated and elevated until now. Now, it's my belief that the devil has been quietly at work. He has been subtle and he's been cunning. And what he's done is he's used entertainment. (laughs) He's used music. He's used all forms of media and everything available to dismantle godly values relating to sex. The standard of God's word is that marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled. But the devil has perverted this and promoted fornication in music, in movies, in society. Now marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled. But the devil has promoted adultery and affairs. Satan has built this kind of an acceptance among people that sex outside of marriage is no longer a sin. His lies are that there is no shame. There is no consequence in sexuality outside of marriage. His lies are that there is no shame. There's no consequence when it comes to how many sexual partners one can and should have. My friends, we're living in an age where sexual sin has been normalized by the devil. But there are four effects that sexual sin has that I'd like to bring to your attention. The first effect of blatant sexual sin is that you are opening spiritual doors with another person. And more often than not, you do not know what lies behind those doors. So what does this mean? Well, when we engage in sexual sin, we engage in sin against our own bodies. Sexuality is spiritual. It was designed by God as a spiritual tie between a husband and a wife. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. That's what the Bible says. So, even when it is distorted, this principle still holds true. It's true for non-marital sexual behavior. When you join with another person, you are still united as one flesh, and there is a spiritual tie that is made. Listen, when you do this, You open yourself up spiritually. And the point here is that you don't know where the other person has been. You don't know what spirits they've united themselves with that are now united with you. When you lay down with them, you don't know what you're opening yourself up to. We tend to think that God was being repressive and cruel in limiting sexual behavior when in fact, He was trying to protect us from powers and principalities, the rulers of the darkness of this age, and spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And so the question I have is why won't we heed God's warning? So the first effect of sexual sin is that you open yourself up spiritually. Now the second effect of sexual sin is that you are making soul ties and attachments 
to someone who is potentially destructive for you. In addition to the potential of taking on the spirits of multiple partners, you are also uniting yourself with people that will be destructive for your soul, your spirit, and your life in general. And oh, be careful. Be careful who you unite yourself to. One example from scripture is Ahab and Jezebel. That's in 1 Kings. Ahab was already wicked, but his union with Jezebel took his wickedness to another level. His attachment to Jezebel was extremely destructive for him and for the nation of Israel. When you tie your soul to someone whose soul is not committed to following the ways of God, you open your soul up to corruption. Don't you know that whoever you choose to unite yourself with can have an influence on your soul? And when you're talking about sexual sin, you're talking about uniting your soul with another soul. So if you're uniting your soul with multiple other souls who have been uniting with multiple other souls, you now have soul ties with people who you've never even met. Multiple people you have never met. Personally, I would want to know what souls are in me. I'd prefer to have only one, as a matter of fact. We must always be on guard against those corrupting influences. And we have to guard our souls. The third effect of sexual sin is separation from God. The Apostle Paul tells us that the wages of sin is death. Ultimate death is separation from Jesus Christ. If we are actively engaging in sin, we are actively separating ourselves from God. And if we are actively separating ourselves from God, we are actively choosing to walk into death. I don't know about you, but I'd much prefer to walk into life, not death. Are a few minutes of pleasure worth an eternity of pain? Are a few casual relationships worth your eternal relationship with God? No, no. There is no greater state of being than being in the presence of God. Let us rid ourselves of the sins of the flesh and throw ourselves into the life of the Spirit. Now, the final effect of sexual sin is that your desire will take you captive. The longer you entertain it, the longer you're in it, the more you become a slave to it. I can't think of a better case to illustrate this than Samson's story over in Judges 13 to 16. God called Samson to deliver his people from the Philistines. However, Samson had a weakness for sexual sin. Repeatedly, he gets off track of his mission and he is derailed by his relationship with Philistine women. Judges 14 verse 3 says it plainly. Then his father and mother said to him, Is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren or among all my people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. Samson was completely ruled by his passions and desires and they became his undoing. He ended up powerless, blind, and rotting in a jail cell rather than fulfilling the purpose God had called him to. Engaging in sexual sin will derail you from God's purpose in your life. Beloved, let us turn away from those things which God has forbidden and let's run to the things that he has approved. 
God has not given us these rules to be harsh and cruel. He has given them because he is trying to spare us trouble. He's trying to spare us heartache and pain. Let us take heed of God's word and let's flee from sexual immorality. Let us repent and seek to be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us live in purity, chasing holiness and chasing Jesus.